Part 4, May June 2015, Paper 12. Question 21. To determine the young modulus of a wire, several measurements are taken. In which row can the measurement not be taken directly with the stated apparatus? So to determine, determine the young modulus, we need uh, the force applied, the original length, the cross-sectional area, and the extension of the wire. As you can see, if you want to measure area of the cross-section of the wire, you cannot measure it directly using a micrometer screw gauge. You need to measure the diameter first using a micrometer screw, screw gauge, and then you have to use the formula to get back to the area of the cross-section of the wire. So the answer should be A. Let's go to option B, C, D first. Extension of a wire can be measured using linear scale. Mass of the load of the wire uh, can be uh, found using electronic balance. Original length of the wire can be measured using a meter rule. So the only option is A because area cannot be directly measured using micrometer screw gauge. Therefore, the option is A. Question 22. A long, thin wire is suspended from a fixed support and hangs vertically. Masses are suspended from its lower end. The load on the lower end is increased from zero and then decreased again back to zero. The diagram shows the force extension graph produced. Where on the graph would be the elastic limit be found? So they are keeping a load on a wire, thin metal wire, so it keeps increasing from zero. The extension keeps increasing from zero. And when the load is removed, they get back to its original, um, original length. That means it's an elastic change, right? It's not getting permanently deformed. Now they're asking where is the elastic limit? So elastic limit is the maximum force to which the solid may be stretched without permanent deformation. So this part from the R to S, this is known as limit of proportionality. As you can see, it's a straight line where when the extension increases along the increase in the force, that means force and extension are directly proportional. Just after the limit of proportionality, you have your elastic limit. So elastic limit is a point where when you remove your load can come back to its original position. But if you increase the load just after the elastic limit, you will have a permanent deformation. So we have to choose where on the graph would the elastic limit be found. So you, it is just after the pro limit of proportionality, which is just after your point S. So as you can see, option A, anywhere between the point R and S. R and S, no, it is incorrect. Just beyond the point S just beyond the point S somewhere here. As you can see, this is your point S. This must be somewhere your T would be there. This is your point between, uh, just beyond the limit of proportionality. So the answer should be B, exactly at point S. No, the point S is limit of proportionality, exactly at point T. As you can see, after increasing from point T, when the load is removed, it's getting back to some position where you have a small extension that is permanently deformed. So that is not the answer. So the answer is just beyond point S. Therefore, option B. Question 23. The diagram represents a steel tube with wall thickness W, which is small in comparison with the diameter of the tube. The tube is under tension caused by a force T parallel to the axis of the tube. To reduce the stress of the material of the tube, it is proposed to thicken the wall. The tube diameter and the tension being constant, which wall thickness gives half the stress. So you can see the cross section of this wire, a tube, is an annulus region. So now they are saying, the tube is under tension. They're giving a tension T to this tube. Uh, to reduce the stress on this material, we have to thicken the wall. To reduce the stress on the tube, we need to thicken the wall. The tension and the diameter is kept constant. To get half the stress, what will be the thickness of the wall? This is the question. 
So first we need to take this cross section area. This is an annulus region. So we have to identify its cross section area. So what I'm doing, I'm taking this annulus region. If I cut this region, maybe if I cut here, I can open it into a rectangular shape. So what's the area of the rectangular shape? Area of the annulus is going to be the circumference of the tube into W. Okay, so that is going to be the area. So if I want to find the area of this annulus, I know uh, my circumference is 2 pi r, or I can say pi into diameter. 2 pi into radius, or I can say pi into diameter. Why? 2 pi r. This 2r is equal to the diameter. So I can say pi d. If I cut open, the length is pi d, and the thickness is w. So area of the annulus, is going to be the circumference of the tube, which is pi d into w. I'm using the area of the rectangular form length into breadth, so pi d into w. Now, what is stress? We know that stress is equal to force into area. In this case, force is t, tension t, and the other cross-section area is pi d w. Now we are keeping our T and D constant. So if you're keeping our T and D constant, pi is a constant value. So you can say stress is direct inversely proportional to W. That means stress is inversely proportional to thickness. Now, if we want to half the stress, if you are halving the stress, then you need to double the thickness because they are inversely proportional. Therefore, half the stress is obtained by doubling W. So the option is C. Question 24. Two light waves of same frequency are represented by the diagram. Same frequency means same time period. What could be the phase difference between the two waves? Now we need to find the angular difference between these two waves. Angular difference is known as phase difference. So as you can see, when, okay, let's take this wave as wave Y and this wave as wave X. As you can see, when wave X is starting at zero degree, wave Y is starting at 100 degree. So one of the phase difference between them is 100 degree, which is not in the option. Therefore, we have to assume that this wave Y is finishing at 100 degree. That means it must have started somewhere. So if it's finishing at 100 degree, a complete oscillation is 360 degree. So we have to go forward, which gives us 360 degree. So if it's finishing at 100, it must have started at minus 260 degree. So if you can see this, minus 260 degree to 100. So that gives you 360. Why? 100 minus of minus 260 gives you 360. So it is starting at minus 260 degree and wave Y is starting at 0 degree. Now we can see the phase difference of wave X and Y as if this is starting at zero, minus of minus 260 degree, there should be a minus here. There's a minus here. Right, so phase difference is going to be zero minus of minus 260, that will give you 260 degree. Therefore, the option is C. I'll repeat one more time. As you can see, the wave X is starting at zero degree Celsius and wave Y is starting at 100 degree Celsius. The phase difference should be 100, which is not in the option. So we have to try another option. In that case, we consider our wave y is ending at 100 degree that means it must have started somewhere which gives a complete oscillation of 360 degree 
So the phase difference uh, for a complete oscillation is 360 degrees. So if it, this is 100, we have to go forward by minus 260. As wave Y is starting at minus 260 and wave X is starting at zero, the difference between them is 260 degree. That's why the option is C. Question 25. A sound wave has a speed of 330 meter per second and a frequency of 50 hertz. What is the possible distance between two points on the wave that have a phase difference of 60 degree? So the velocity is given, the frequency is given. First, we have to determine the wavelength. Wavelength can be found as V is equal to F lambda. So your wavelength is equal to velocity over fre frequency. Velocity is 330 degree divided by the frequency is 50, which gives you 6.6 .6 meter. So what is the definition of wavelength? Wavelength means the distance traveled by one complete oscillation. So that means to one complete oscillation is two pi rad or 360 degree. So for 360 degree, the distance between two points is 6.6 .6 meter. If I need to find for 60 degree, I have to divide this by 360 degree into 60, which gives me 1.1 meter. Yeah, for the option is B.